It's a... And welcome to the Smooth Live show with uh, your host, Paul Toothpick Screw. Before I introduce our guest today, I want to make sure that you uh, click on the subscribe button and the get notifications, the bell, um, and be sure to check out uh, my socials at Facebook and Instagram at smoothjazz.melbourne. We're really excited today to have our, our guest, Mike Cantalano, to the program on the Smooth Live show. Uh, Americans, through his memorial compositions, tasteful um, touches of the piano, uh, his name and, and his music has become familiar to millions of Americans uh, through the broadcast nationwide, nightly on Fox TV, Current Affair um, with uh, Maury Povic and uh, the reporters, Good Day in New York, veteran pianist and composer, Mike Cantalano. Welcome to the Smooth Live Show. All right. Thank you, Paul. Good to see you. Nice to be here. Mate, uh, I know it's uh, sort of, you know, um, quite warm in New York, but also quite late. So uh, I'm really appreciative of your time to be able to uh, hook up with us. Um, let's start Let's start by saying um, your connection. There is a connection to Australia, Mike. I mean, you're all the way in New yeah. York. You've yeah, got this, yeah. Uh, this well, connection. My, my my mother was uh, was a uh, was from Australia. She was from Melbourne, where you're from, and uh, she was a uh, what they called what you they referred to as a war bride. So during World War II, uh, many Australian women married American soldiers, and uh, right. so she was that. She did that, and she so she came here, I guess, in 1945, something like that. Yeah, right. And okay. I still have cousins down there, and. Uh, in Melbourne and, you know, extended family. Yeah. My, her, my mother's sister just passed away not too long ago in Melbourne, but I was there as a kid. I was there when I was like one year old. And then I was there again when I was like 10 years old. It was a really cool place. Yeah. It is a great place, Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you remember? Just uh, anything particular about Melbourne that you remember? Well, I think it, it was, I, yeah, I remember um, the D Dandenong mountains. Is that, is that, is that near you? The Dandenongs? Yeah, it's not far. It's about half hour, 40 yeah, minutes. Yeah, I remember seeing, you yeah. could see a view of that from, from where we were in Ringwood, right? You could see yeah. the Dandenongs in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Well, uh, so it's been a while, but look, things have certainly changed. And obviously with this uh, COVID situation at the moment, how's lockdown treating you uh, in uh, your side of the world? I mean, It's okay. It's, uh, New, York, New York has become surprisingly uh, pretty safe, because I, I think because they really staged it properly, but um, this is, it's uh, it was total shutdown for a while, and then just they've been just doing it in stages, reopening, and they uh, finally uh, finally uh, it's pretty much reopened. Not everything. There's still it's still a lot of limits, a lot of limits. For sure, yeah. Challenging time, but again, um, I think it's a great opportunity to uh, get together and, and talk talk music and talk what you love doing. Uh, what we both love doing is um, let's start by uh, how did it all start? Um, I sort of mentioned in the beginning there that uh, you're, you're a household name, really, when you think about your musical um, compositions that, uh, you know, for uh, Fox TV, uh, yeah. composition that you compose. How did that um, opportunity come about, Mike? Well, there was this reporter there, Steve Dunleavy, who was also Australian, and um, he uh, really was a journalist of the world. He just passed away last year, and uh, he, we were talking one day, and he, um, he had a mutual love of Brazilian music, of Antonio Carlos Jobim, and then I had had this Rio Affair project up and running at that point. And, uh, and so I showed him some cuts and he just went nuts. And, and then, uh, so he, they started using a lot of the Rio affair music. In fact, I think every single one of those songs at one point or another got, got used. And then they were new. It was a new network. You know, the Murdoch had just started. This is before any of the, uh, stuff that we know about today, but, uh, so it was a new new takeover. So they just needed music. So then they had me writing music like every other day um, from home, messenger it in, and for the different stories, eerie music, and 
you know, dramatic music and whatever they need. It was a lot of fun, really a lot of fun. And Steve uh, was just a great guy and re a real music fan. Yep. Yeah, his favorite right. his favorite music was the Antonio Carlos Jobim, Frank Sinatra stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and and Sam, looking at some of the uh, research, um, the uh, information that I've seen on YouTube, it sounds like a really bubbly sort of character and uh, definitely oh, he something. Was a character. Right. He, he really yeah. was. Yeah. I'm sure you'd have a few stories to tell. I'm sure. Oh man, you know he, 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 we. You know, we would drive home from the city and he'd be singing Agua Ju Bebe, the, the Joe Beam Sinatra yeah. <laughs> song. That's a yeah. pretty well, awesome. Exactly. Anytime I'd see him, he'd start singing Agua Ju Bebe. Right, okay. a really cool song by Joe Beam. That's yeah. Amazing. Well, a uh, big uh, hi to uh, Mark um, Abrams. Says, hi, Mike. Uh, thanks. All for right. Hey, Mark. Yeah, Mark's a great guy from New York here and a, a huge jazz fan huge huge music fan I, I don't know anybody who goes to see as much music as he does really right. it's incredible wow. incredible support wow and it's uh, just a really excited uh um chibbly glow uh brazil yeah you you lo live you mike love you love all you. right thank you cool nice very nice but um so i what really threw me, and it's not the fact that it was I was totally surprised, but I was watching some, doing some research, and um, I come come across a, a clip from uh, the current affair presenter some years back, uh, Maury Maury Povic. Oh yeah, and he um, he mentions you um, at the end of this story. Talks uh, quite a quite a you know challenging story, and he mentions you and by saying uh, music written by Mike Cantalano and uh, saxophone by. <laughs> Um, Lou Lou Marini. So right, right. that was a lot of fun. Well, that was that, the. I didn't that know was, well, that was the the Robert Chambers the murder in Central Park. There was a big uh, preppy murder uh, story back in that time, and uh, it was a big it was a big thing. It was um, it was a whole episode. So it was just saxophone yeah. of that of that melody of mine is Raph's theme. The reporter's name was Raphael Abramowitz. Right. Uh, he's still around um but uh and uh anyway so it was just a saxophone interpretation by lou marini blue lou marini from the blues brothers right uh, and uh he um did a great job and uh, they liked it a lot so it was really really very exciting for me that was a lot of fun yeah yeah well i mean it's some notables as i've done Again, uh, uh, setting up for this interview today, it's incredible your background, Mike. What I love, uh, when what I've also seen, which is uh, interesting, is that you are not, you have uh, notable for the love of two worlds, Brazil and New York. Um, obviously, you reside in New York, but uh, why Brazil? What is it that uh, makes well, Brazil so exciting for you? I, mean, I I think that when I was kind of growing up into you know wanting to do music, I. Um, I started going to Brazil to discover where, you know, this Jobim was from, Antonio Carlos Jobim, the composer. And uh, I really fell in love with it down there. I've been there many, many times. I speak Portuguese. And uh, it's uh, so that that's kind of uh, just uh, can you just clarify that question one more time? What was it about Brazil? Well, yeah, so Brazil. So um, it's actually noted, and I think Steve Dunleavy he talks about uh, you're one of the characters. Oh yeah, in, yeah. Well, that is, uh, you've just like it's two worlds. Yeah, it's, it's New York. Well, yeah, I mean, it's really true though. I mean, no matter what I do, I always come back to that kind of music. I don't know what it is. I just love the rhythms. I love the musicians down there. It's got they've got some of the best musicians of the world, and um, incredible, you know, guitars, guitarists, and drum drummers and percussion. It's just so beautiful and a lot of our music here has a lot of that influence i think every, Absolutely. Uh, many many artists here are, are so starting with frank sinatra right back then yeah and stan gets back before that and yeah. uh you know a lot of people are, are absolutely there. and i think in that that era in that time or you know say time 80s 90s you know we looked at um it was very influenced by brazilian sound and um, not, you know, yeah. uh, Lee, Lee right now, Phil Perry, you know, if we go back yeah. sort of you know, Dave Ruse and all that sort of era, you know, um, there was, you know, influenced by that. But uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim, Brazilian composer, pianist, songwriter, arranger, um, wrote The uh, the Girl from um, Empanina. Yeah. It's the actual one of the most recorded 
um, songs of all times. I mean, so, yeah, yeah definitely. Cool. Um, he internationalised Bossa Nova um, and obviously merging with jazz in the 60s. So let's get on to uh, a Rio affair, 1989. So you've uh, not just, um, you know, you started to, to obviously make music, but you were making music for a lot and, and well-known um, out there in the market. So how did uh, how did a Rio affair start? What, what was well, the thing? I started going to Rio and then I started looking for, I had, I had started recording, I had started getting the idea that I wanted to do instrumental music because I was, I, I technically I could sing, but I wasn't kind of leaning on doing singing. So I went to see, I had started to see some great musicians in New York. Steve Gadd had this band called the Gadd Gang with him and Eddie Gomez and Cornell Dupree and Richard T. And, uh, and I was getting the idea that I, I, w I would like to record instrumental music. And also in the same time, getting to know Blue Lou Marini, who was also doing another incarnation with Richard T and Cornell and different people and uh, getting to getting and Chris Parker, great drummer in New York, too. Back then, um, I was getting very inspired. Then I started going to Brazil and I started looking for the equivalent guys down there. And I, and I came across some uh, really wonderful musicians, uh, Ricardo Silvera, a guitar player from and a recording artist from uh, Brazil from Rio and Nico Asumsao who yesterday was some anniversary of his birthday I guess he passed away very young and uh, another great trumpeter down there Marcio Montoroyos so I started recording with Nico and Mars Nico and Ricardo and and different rhythm sections then I'd come back here so that's kind of like the affair because it was a combination of of the two worlds really then i'd come here back here have randy play some trumpet or um uh various uh mark egan on bass and you know, gad overdub some drums and yep. it became like a whole it was like an affair and of course dunleavy suggested the name <laughs> rio affair at the time and that, that, yeah. he because uh he, you, know, you, you, you were familiar with him when we spoke yeah. the other day yeah Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and the great memories and how how good that, that is. And uh, just just I think it's important um, to just uh, if we can for a moment there, Mike. A B the the Borgs uh, family from Brazil all loves you, Mike. Thanks, oh, Doc. Thank you, thank you. Hello, mm -hmm. hello, Borges family. Yeah, I mean the Borges. That's right. right. Um, Mark Gade. Uh, hey, Mike. Mark. Hey, Mark. All right. Nice. Um, thanks, Doc. He says uh, AB says that again, and then um, Chibli Glow. Um, All right, so Bell virtual. Yeah. Nice. So thank, thank you. Thank you. So the Smooth Life Show. If you just joined us, uh, talking with um, veteran pianist and composer Mike Cantalano. Hey, uh, Rio Affair, nineteen eighty nine. Um, we, you know, you've mentioned some of these names, but just interesting. What a, a, you know, an amazing set of artists that you've you've have on on both journeys. I mean, not just Rio Affair. We're going to talk about Manhattan Affair shortly. Um, um, Randy Brecker, you know, Cornell Dupree, you know, just yep. uh, how, do you, how do you get these artists to come on and be as part of part of your album? I mean, part of your well, musical. In New York City, a lot of them were playing. As I said, uh, Cornell and Gad, Steve Gad had this band. And um, Randy, um, uh, Randy is from New York too. So I, I, New York, you've got a lot of great people around. It's you know, center, right? time. Yeah. you can you can find the best guys. You know, playing within a month, you'll find. Except now during the pandemic, of course. But normally, there there there's people around playing and some great music in town. So I just made it my business. I I would hear different records. I'd hear records that i liked and read the liner notes like back in that time maybe i liked um steely dan records and I, yeah. i'd look up who did the arranging this rob mounsey was a big uh influence for me as an yeah. arranger and a keyboardist and did a lot of steely dan stuff and these beautiful michael franks records of the you know say the mid 80s or so and uh and then it's all these same guys on there randy and and Gad and Will and Mark Egan and Sanborn and all these different people. So, it's, yeah, uh, I made it my business to really find find people. 
So we've gone from um, 1989, we've sort of forwarded a few years to 20, uh, 2007, and uh, Manhattan Affair is is born. Um, a Manhattan Affair is a musical tribute to Manhattan, which I find, I mean, the classic um, uh, video, you know, when I watch your uh, interview, um, you have some of the pioneers of the smooth jazz business, Will Lee, Rob Mounty, you've met Bob James, like just incredible, Steve Gadd. Um, and again, you've just suited up with the, the right people to, to obviously bring out a result. Um, so again, just just the, some of the background in, in how the Manhattan Affair came about, because you're not you're known for music, and and you thought you you know you've gone from this Brazilian um, flair, obviously Rio Affair, and then now uh, you're, you're trying in the smooth jazz world. Why that direction? Like, what was it that was uh, um, appealing to? About about what was appealing a about affair. a Manhattan Affair? What was appealing about Manhattan Affair? About the smooth jazz world? At the smooth jazz world, yeah. Well, at the time, at the time, you know, I, 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 I liked what was going on. I, I liked a lot of uh, what was happening with, uh, as I said, a lot of the music that I just mentioned had, would have been played on there, and and um, and uh, um, Bob James put out a really cool album at the time called Restless, and at the same time. I met him in some New York City club at a tribute to this great guitar player, Eric Gale, who died. Right. And um, so I, I liked what was going on. I kind of just kind of go with what I like. That's kind of yeah. what I do, you know? Yeah. I go with what, what, I'm, what I'm liking to play. And, and, and if something I hear falls like that, that's good. So uh, the Manhattan Affair, Smooth as Silk is the first release um, single. And yeah. just uh, some of the names that you have on, uh, tell us a little bit about the, um, the track. And uh, we're going to actually play, you're going to do a, um, a live session for us for Smooth as okay. Silk. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah. Um, Will Lee on bass, uh, Chuck Loeb, guitar. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. he's yeah. moved on. Um, Rob Mounsey on um, Rhodes, George yeah. Willie on synth, yeah. um, Sean Pelton on drums, yeah. uh, Bashiri Johnston on percussion. Uh, yeah. Lou Mareni on uh, sax and flute, and um, Randy Brecker, obviously trumpet and flugelhorn, and yeah. arranged by yourself and Chuck Lowe. So it's a nice yeah, arrangement yeah. mix. It was really nice. Yeah. Well, Will Will Lee, the bassist, was a uh, is also a great singer. He was in the uh, David Letterman band for many years. Yes. The bassist, and uh, so he um, he became like my shepherd in that whole Manhattan Affair process, and. We, we just kind of seemed to connect well on ideas. And uh, so he helped me a lot in so many ways and also kind of picking who might be great for this or that. And uh, Chuck Loeb was very instrumental in that song, Smooth as Silk, too. And uh, I went up to see him um, at his house at that time and uh, just did a little, little hang, a little sequencing session and he gave me some great ideas. On, on some of that groove of that song. It's a lot of, a lot of work. And Sean Pelton is the, still the drummer on the Saturday Night Live band okay. for many right. years. Yeah. He's okay. an incredible drummer from New York. Yeah. Really Again, an incredible artist. So uh, how about um, we go and do a live piece on Smooth as Silk to, uh, to, I guess, to, you know, uh, what, what you're thinking okay. around. How All you right. Know. So what yeah. I'll do is I'm going to, okay, I'm going to get up. All right, here we go. I'm going to move the chair out of the way. All right, here we go. And we'll move smooth, the chair back. Smooth live show with Mike Cantalano from live from New York. Great having him on, and uh, he's going to do a piece for us, Smooth as Silk, from his. Uh, do, do like an edited rendition.
Well done. Fantastic. Wow. wow. You can hear the applause at the virtual applause. applause. That's phenomenal, Mike. <laughs> Amazing, man. Yes. Let me say for um, the people who are watching, you know, uh, when I the, your album introduced to me some years back and still today, I mean, Smoother Silk is just, it'd have to be uh, defined as one of the, certainly one of the great, um, you know, songs out there. And I just love it. Uh, for me, I love it. And I've, I played on my shows here in, in, in That's Melbourne. Nice. Appreciate that. That's really my great. Yeah. Radio show, mate. But uh, that was just, that was beautiful. Absolutely lovely. Thank but, you. How um, do you play? Um, are you always on the piano? I mean, you play quite often throughout the day or you know, throughout the weeks, or you just get on it, you know? Yeah, well, no, especially during this pandemic. I mean, there isn't much else to do. <laughs> you can go outside, and you know, that's and and or you can play the piano. I mean, it's, it's a lot lately, a lot, yeah, but lately, a lot, especially. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Um, the Jazz at Home series, and I think that's probably a good segue to take you, um, Mm -hmm. to ask you around that about that um yeah you you how did it start you know what was obviously the motivation behind it and uh yeah tell us about the jazz at home series well i just it, it's um one of these things where um i saw that it was international jazz day and um a lot of people started doing them so i i was thinking about that um it might be a good thing for me to do. So I, I, I thought, you know, I did, I did one. I did the, this, this, this song, Smooth as Silk, for that from home. And then I said, I'm going to eventually just keep doing them. And, um, and what, what I wanted to do eventually was to just, and I will, as long as this thing goes on, this situation, yeah. um, just slowly but surely, just put out solo piano performances of each and every one of these Manhattan Affair tunes. That was kind of like one thing I kind of challenged myself to do because you kind of have to rethink it a little bit without drums and without, you know, without other instruments. For sure. So, yeah. yeah. But that was a beautiful uh, um, interpretation of Smooth as Silk. So I'm, I'm that's uh, oh, absolutely thanks. amazing. Really lovely. Yeah. Um, Moonlight and Baja, just run us through some of the tracks there. A 13 track um, CD, uh, Beauty yeah. and the Beast. You had Bob James on Rhodes. Oh, uh, yeah. Th thinking of you, uh, Will Lee on vocals. Yeah. Um, certainly a great, uh, lovely vocalist. Yeah. Um, plus, plus lots more, obviously. Um, tell tell also, us a little bit around. Also, uh, we had The Fool on the Hill, which Will sang on the, the lead vocal, the, the Beatles tune, which was. Yeah. Cool. Fun. yeah it's seriously it's a classic cd i mean of all time i mean I, it, when you talk about um uh, you know you, you reference it as being really like smooth the silk has been um you know the thought of manhattan and i i whenever i look at the cd and i listen to it it reminds me of obviously mike cantalano but also mm -hmm. you know, new york you know it's bold it, it's um lots of flavor lots of you know textual ability through it um tell us a little about lalina so uh it's the um, ninth track on the album yeah Will Lee on bass and bass. Yeah, yeah. Will Will Lee on bass and vocals, and um, again, beautiful orchestrations from Rob Mounsey and uh, Sean Pelton on drums, Chuck Loeb on guitar, and Bashiri on percussion, and Randy and Randy Brecker and Lou Marini again on some beautiful uh, horns and flugel and muted trumpet and flutes and sax and really really nice nice. Uh, you know, work that everybody did on that. It was a long time labor of love. It took a long time to finish, but it came out re really nice. Right. Okay. How long did the whole album take to to put together? What was I, I the, would say, the you know, probably a good more than a year. I wow. would say. And that's wow. like underestimating. That's like that's you know. That's good. Actually. Quadruple, <laughs> quadruple, quadruple that. No. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> it took a long time. Um, you mentioned in some of the, uh, I guess, uh, interviews that you've had that uh, if there's one thing that you were sort of not, not uh, negatively opposed to, but you were quite uh, disappointed at the fact that you didn't take any live footage of the studio um, sessions with, with the guys and making the, making the albums. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny is back then I'm doing it now on this new project I'm doing. I, I, I am going out of my way to make sure I roll some cameras. Uh <laughs> 
but back then it was it was uh not you know we didn't have phones and selfies and all that stuff you had a little little phone right with a horrible yeah. camera and uh no I, I think it's almost par for the course with making music i i almost think you have to have video especially now look especially now with this whole Absolutely. situation going on i mean Absolutely. i have some i have some stuff from the recent sessions but the songs haven't caught up to being done enough to put the videos out but it it would be really good if they were if i was done and i could put it all together so quickly but we'll see you know Man, you got plenty of time <laughs> i know it's plenty of time I know. yeah yeah no. No, but I, definitely times have changed without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, uh, so it's it's really it's really nice to have the video factor. I mean, just put a camera on a tripod and just let it roll. And um, I it's yeah, I don't think it's 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 nice to uh, um, you know, just just uh, think that it's about the music, but it's also a vis. I think it's become a visual medium. For sure. One, you know, one one time out in Los Angeles. I met uh, Joe Pesci, and he, oh. he's a singer. You know, he sings. Did you know that? I didn't know that. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, <laughs> he, really, he really does sing, and and he said to me, he said it's about the music. It's about the music, and I'm saying it's really. It you know, I'm saying to myself now that comes to mind. It's not just about the music. I think the the visual medium to support it is important. Is he is he much as the, the character as he uh, portrays in the movies? Very, is he he's very quiet? Very quiet. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very quiet guy. Very quiet mate, guy. who haven't you met, uh, Mike? Who, who haven't you met, mate? <laughs> Jeez, oh, I, mean, I don't me. know. I've met a lot of people. I've met a lot of people. <laughs> lucky. I guess, lucky you know. I guess being in New York, yeah. huh? The epicenter of yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was, um, yeah, there was this friend of my, there's this restaurant out in L.A. which just closed, not because of the pandemic. I just found out right before the pandemic where uh, a friend of mine is a, entertainment guy and actor and um with the whole pesci and de niro gang and their friends oh, yeah. mm -hmm. so pesci was there one night and, and uh i i have pesci sings he did a nice album he did a nice song recently actually i actually really? liked it a lot it's on youtube somewhere with okay. uh i i'd be guessing if i said the sidemen um but oh no with arturo sandoval oh, okay all right. right it's beautiful it, right. beautiful trumpet, beautiful horns, really nice. Yeah. I'll have to look for it. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, I've put on the cuff, mate, I've, I'm going to ask you, Mike. Uh, what would be the the something surprising about you? Oh, what would be surprising? I don't know. What would be surprising? Um, I don't know. I I, I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I'd have to think about that. I don't know. <laughs> Mate, uh, when we spoke, Mike, uh, you know, a week or so ago, we we're putting this uh, together. You, I asked you, you know, would you play some live? And you were sort of like, "Yep, yeah, I'd love to." And and um, you know, it's a blessing to uh, have this uh, on the smooth live show. Um, so I'm really honoured. Thank you so much for you know, taking that that time out, uh, Lalina. We're going to play this um, yeah. live, yep. um, live, and uh, and again, just you know, really uh, grateful that you. Rather than a show a video or whatever, but you know you do it live, so. Well, it's a video. There's a camera here, so that's good, right? It's good. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that interpretation and music and video. That's good. That's I, really. I, I had a funny thing I was going to tell you today. You know, it, it's, it's funny on YouTube with all these. Uh, you get kind of start to see all these videos that get views. Yeah. And I was going to kid you if we talk about the. Maxwell, you heard about this lady in New York, the the, the Jelaine Maxwell thing. We we'll talk about that. You'll get we'll get a million views. You know, you can talk about anything else. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> the YouTube mania, but uh, let's. Uh, so we'll play the Lelena song. Lelena is my longtime, you know, partner, life partner, and she's from Brazil too. So it's a Brazilian influence song as well, certainly. All right. Well, uh, Mark had a lot of. Yep. yep, that's out of the way. Yeah. On the Smooth Live show, um, you know, thank you for joining us. And yeah, it's.
Absolutely. All right. Mike Antolano on the keys, on the piano um, with Lelina on the Smooth Live show, live from Melbourne and New York. And uh, we're really excited to have you. Uh, how do you feel after that, mate? <laughs> that was fun. Fun. How does it sound? Does it sound okay? Yeah, it through sounds the, good. Through the internet and all that, the quality's okay? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, you, you made a reference uh, a few days back, uh, Mike, about um, you're not selling it like pianos aren't. You know, people aren't just not engaging in it. What, what was, what, what are you seeing in the market today? Like, um, in regards to young artists, I saw a lot, lot more electronic. I don't know. You know, I don't, I, don't, I, I well, I, I was reading that piano, piano sales are down. You know, worldwide, I, I think you know, in the last, uh, you know, in the last century, the, it was, it was huge after the. Uh, you know, in other words, after World War II, every house, even my, my family down in Melbourne, they had a piano in the house. Every house I knew had a piano in the house. Yeah. And I don't think that's the case anymore. Right. I guess people who want to learn, they get their kid a keyboard, maybe. And um, yeah. it's a shame. It's a shame. I, I, it's, it's too bad. I mean, I, there's nothing like a real piano. And. Uh -huh. um, you know, and, and, and obviously being able to play it as well, which is obviously, yeah, yeah. I, I use yeah. this thing here, it's called a Yamaha Disclavier piano. And what right. it is, is it, it integrates with the computer recording really well, so you can add synthesizers and play them from instead of having to go to a keyboard keyboard, you uh -huh. can just kind of take a MIDI output from there and go into synthesizers or into a computer recorder. And at the same time, it's also a piano, so it's pretty cool. So I, I like the real the real thing when you know right. yeah it's certainly when and you can tell the way you play it it's uh, it's amazing and I think when when I was a kid there was a lot of uh, you know you had the Beatles you had a lot of pop stars that had a lot of piano visually that's why I was gonna say why I think you yeah. don't have that anymore it's really. changing changing yeah. ones yeah but it's people you know again like yourself who are out there and who are still playing it on. On you know on the internet, still doing live shows and you know showing young people today, I guess, or young artists, you know, potentially this is what you can do, or this is um, this is really what music's about. It's that's the essence. When I yeah. when you're playing Lelina, and I, I can just visualize the the um, 
the track on your CD mm -hmm. in my mind, as well as the the interpretation oh, here. Yeah. And, uh, it's phenomenal. Yeah. So thanks, phenomenal. thanks. Yeah. Well, that's how it starts, right? It starts with the piano before you yeah. build it up to everything else, you know? Yeah, so. mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Um, the Dindy, tell us a little bit around uh, I, Ivan uh, Linz's um, interpretation of uh, you've got the two, the English version and the Portuguese version of Dindy on the, the Manhattan Affair. Um, yeah. How did that yeah. come about? Well, um, <clears throat> we had been uh, producing the tracks here in New York, me and Will, and uh, we had uh, Steve Gadd and Rob Mounsey and um, Jeff Miranoff on guitar, wonderful guitar player, and uh, George Whitty was also helping in, in some of the production on that. And uh, so it was, and Bashiri, and, you know, so I had all these tracks going on and everything was sounding really good. So when I, I sent Yvonne the tape in Brazil, and he, um, I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of his. <clears throat> I guess after Jobim, <clears throat> excuse me, he's kind of the guy who carried the torch in a sense for Brazilian music recorded outside of Brazil as far as uh, um, having his music recorded by many. And um, it's funny that I had him sing a Jobim song, but he, he loves Jobim, he loves, you know, everybody down there loves Jobim, of course. He did a beautiful album called Jobiniando, which is his tribute to Jobim. But um, so I sent him the track, and then he, he sent back the English and the Portuguese. So it was, I thought it was really cool, really nice. Yeah, wow. And also, uh, at the end of an era, your tribute to your parents? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. on, yeah. On the album as well? Yeah, well, they had just passed away around the time of Manhattan Affair, not too long before that. So it just seemed like, uh, again, I felt that I wanted the piano to be an identifying signature of the album because it's easy to get carried away with a lot of other um, production stuff on a lot of the other songs. So at the last minute, I thought of this, just a solo piano tune on, on to close it out. For sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Mike, we've got, uh, you know, 30 plus uh, comments. Um, it's just absolute stream and they're obviously very popular out there. Um, plus, there's so many comments coming through and stuff. I don't think there's enough time to show them all, but uh, we want to just are say. We, are we on where? Are, uh, you're, what are we seeing here? Is this YouTube or Facebook or what are we seeing? So it's YouTube um, and the two Facebook uh, links there for smoothjazz.melbourne and my personal one. But oh, cool. look, we can go through if you like, um, but just to... Uh, to uh, Mark uh, is come through. Sounds great there. Thanks, Mark. Um, you've got uh, Vito, Vito Re, bravo, I love it. All right. Um, Andreas, it's just amazing uh, the technology, eh? Andreas Elias. That is Andre. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, Adriana is my wife, dear wife, watching the show as well. So great show, guys. Fantastic. Oh, nice, nice. Thank you. Oh, Ruth, thank you, Ruth. Yeah, thank you. It's just massive. It's, it's wild. That's cool. Aline, Olivia, beautiful music. Mm -hmm. She'll be the glow. Yeah. Well done. All right. Aline, Olivia, play Lalina. Well, we did. Thank you. That's, that's great. Right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Doc. Okay. Cool you, Doc. Huh? All play right. Fantastic. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, cool. More music, Dindy. Oh, there you go. They're challenging you, mate. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Dingy is a beautiful song. It really is. It is a beautiful song. And, and, and like, and, like yeah. a little different version, that one. It's kind of almost not reggae, but kind of like a, it's normally Gingy is a very slow, you know, really laid back thing. And that one has a little, little bit of a nice groove to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You could just jump on the piano and just, you could play for hours. I reckon if I just let you. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rolling on mic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. I enjoy it. Good on you, mate. Um, sounds great, Mike, from Doug Clayton. And, uh, All right, Doug. All right Mark. Mark. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, as I said, mate, they just keep coming, rolling through. Um, Jemias uh, Alves. There you go. You can you can pronounce that one. <laughs> All right. Alves, yeah. Alves, yeah. No, so uh, awesome, mate. Um, smooth live show with Mike Cantalano. Yeah, so Lelina. Um, 
How do you get young artists to pick up the keys? I mean, what are some of the things? Right? Well, I, I think, I don't know. I, I think you just need to see more pianos. I think and I get back to that visual thing. I think you got to you got to see the piano. When I was a kid, and again, I saw Paul McCartney playing the piano, or Billy Joel, or Elton, or people like that. I wanted to play that thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. Or anybody, you know. There's a lot of Burt Baccarat. I loved him when I was a kid. You Since know, I... he had a TV show, and you'd see this big, beautiful piano, and you know, makes you want to jump on it. But it's just, I think that lack of exposure is. It's, I don't know, it's not too often, right? You don't see it too much anymore. Mate, just um, thinking about, uh, whilst we're chatting, I'm you know, thinking about some of the venues in New York. I mean, you've no doubt hosted um, some, some of the great venues. Uh, who, you know, tell us a little bit about some of those venues that you've played in New York in, in itself. Oh, um, yeah, you know what? I don't actually, I, I haven't well, really played that many great places in New York. I played the Rochester. been humble, <laughs> mate. Yeah. <laughs> Rochester Jazz Festival, that was a lot of fun. That's okay. a bit out of New York City. And uh, that's a wonderful festival. You know, after the last recession of 2008, the whole world kind of took another budget cut on jazz festivals. Mm -hmm. And so the whole world got really trimmed thin. A lot of things got canceled. And there isn't just you know, ten, probably 10% 10 of the number of gigs and festivals that there yeah. was before 2008 so but rochester is still a major one there's like 10 major festivals in the united states yep. at this point or okay. i don't know about after this recession whatever this is now i don't know well it's it's different isn't it and i think we're uh we'll, i'm sure promoters and and uh, obviously organizations are thinking differently on it, what we can do to engage and, and continue the music flowing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and doing it online, you know, you're seeing yeah. some uh, small stuff happening at the moment. Yeah. But uh, this is, you know, I mean, I had a thought of the Smooth Live show about 12 months ago and then to do it and I thought, oh, you know, to go live uh, was quite challenging at the time. But, you know, I, I think timing is right for everything, isn't it? Right. Um, Mike, I know uh, I don't want you to let the cat out of the bag, but uh, what are you working on today? What's... What's Mike Cantalato uh, uh, up to, and uh, what's it look like for 2021? Well, hopefully uh, I have this whole album of, of new, new music that I'm working on with a lot of the same guys, and, um, and hopefully that should be done by January. And then while we're kind of in this COVID mode, I'm trying to squeeze out as many solo piano things. Maybe, maybe I'll, you know come up with some with enough for another album like that or duo stuff or you know piano and one other instrument or something sure. like that it's a good time for that because not a lot of people are coming out you know and and not anybody wants to be around anybody as far as mu the musicians i know most people are just staying home so right. sometimes you can do things long distance and um and make some nice music that way you know Getting together in a group is not going to be happening. Too not too too early, yeah. For yeah, sure, I don't think you know. For sure, yeah. Mike. What are you? Who would you love to collaborate with um, and do a duo? You mentioned sort of doing some duo work. I mean, who are some of your, you know, your top um, uh, top picks to uh, work with and do do a show like this? Or you know, who would well, it be? I mean, I I think you know. I don't know. I've been for fortunate that I have a lot. I have a lot of wonderful musicians that are always part of my music. Um, so, I, I, you know, any who's ever available. That's what it comes down to. When you have <laughs> guys who are very busy, it's very hard to get you know get the right uh, get, get things. You know, you have to see whose schedule's busy. Now, right now, again, we're really on hold because of this whole situation. Mm -hmm. But next year. You know, yeah, most of those guys on the album, it's all the same, same people I love. All okay, the time. Yeah, yeah, for sure, sure. I mean, and, and it works as, as well, doesn't it? Yeah, um, it works as well. Uh, just a couple more uh shows. So I think it's you know, just to uh, Mark Abrams, the garage. So, do you know much oh, about that? The garage, yeah, that, that's where I met Mark at this small little club downtown in Manhattan. I had a little uh, had a gig there, and it was a lot of fun. And Mark came with his wife, and uh, 
That was cool. It was a cool little place that closed down a couple of years ago for some other, uh, other not pandemic related, just you know, business related. But it was a nice place, and um, yeah, that was that's where we met. It's nice. Ruth Elvis, please play more uh, Lembra Dimim. Oh, oh, that's another Yvonne Lynn song. It's a beautiful song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More music. Okay. All right. Evan Lynn's, yeah. There you go. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> please play. Well, we've got another one. We've got another. We've got a secret coming up shortly. But, all right. So, uh, anyway. All righty. So, um, breaking it down, it's a segment I, I love to ask um, our artists on the Smooth Live show. Uh, it's a one liner per um, one line sentence, I guess, um, in a nutshell, how you would frame up someone in, in uh, obviously, esteemed. Um, Musician. So one liner on Bill Evans. Oh man, he, he really was uh you know of the modern, you know, the last fifty years or whatever, he really set the pace for a lot of pianists in the whole world. I mean everybody he influenced so many people, it's 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 crazy. Yeah, he's just wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Dave Grusen. Dave Grusin, an, an incredible composer and arranger, and uh, I always liked his touch. Is really, I really loved his touch and film music stuff that he did. I always liked that. That I, I would say he, you know, people like him and and you know maybe Burt Bacharach kind of make me want to do visual music like movies and TV stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we spoke a little bit about um, Antonio Carlos Jobim. Yeah, we did speak about him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He died too young, too young. Yeah, it's a legacy you left here. Yeah. 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 So, uh, twenty twenty one, uh, lots of work, jazz home series. You're working on um, some new, some new music, um, and so on. Uh, I guess to as we sort of come to a close on the show, uh, you, we're delighted to again, mate, have you on on the program and and to okay. play uh, live for us, mate live from uh, New York, which is amazing. Yeah, isn't that cool? Pretty cool. Very cool, mate. Um, so I get um, Dos Corrigo, your interpretation, uh, you've done of an Ivan Lins. Yeah. Um, yep. Me and Two Streams. What, what was the pick up on that one? Why Why did you uh, I, I, I love the song. You know, I was trying to find uh, songs that could, you know, merit, again, this kind of solo piano adaptation. And I, I like that one a lot. There's a movie. It's a movie. I like movie music a lot, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Um, there's a movie from Brazil called called Dois Corrigos. And Dois. Ivan, Ivan did the music. And that song like, is from it. And it's just a, it's just a beautiful song. And he writes, <laughs> he's got a lot of songs, Ivan. And that, that's one beautiful one that seemed to adapt well for piano. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you're correct, and, and adapting for piano is right. I mean, how do you, I mean, obviously, you pick a music that you know that you know, resonates to you. I mean, it's just so much music, though. I mean, you know, obviously, certain things, um, you know, uh, you receive or touch in a different way compared to other sort of music. But, I mean, I saw you play the Dois, uh, you know, uh, Carrigo and uh, on YouTube, and it's just, it's lovely. And you've got to play it for us live. Sure, yeah. There's so much music out there. I mean, how do you how do you pick and choose? Like, I mean, I guess whatever touches the heart, right? Yeah, I think whatever touches, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just that case, uh, I was just going through Yvonne's songbook and just kind of just trying out different songs, and I, I like that one a lot. I mean, it's just you know some of Gingy. I always like that, and. The, the Beatles tune, the Fool on the Hill, was a lot of fun on Manhattan Affair. So I guess it's just uh, whatever. What, what do they say that we're, how does that expression go? We're good at what we did when we were like 13 or something like that. Isn't there a, we always keep coming back to what we were into when we yeah. were 13, something yeah. like that, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'll always be drawn back to Beatles. And I, I love, I you know, I'm well, a Beatles fan. It's interesting you brought that up because um, this was one of my questions, uh, Mike, was uh, before the live, uh, we went live, I asked you, what is the music you listen to? What did you listen to today? Oh, yeah, and just Beatles. Beatles on YouTube. That's it. Yeah. 
it's funny. <laughs> there's so much. There's so much. And it's so exciting. I mean, how can you? I mean, I don't know any musician. I mean, I think I know so many musicians who became musicians because of the Beatles. And that's a, I do remember as a kid in Melbourne, my aunt and my, I guess my mother or my aunt showing me uh, where the Beatles played in Melbourne. I couldn't tell you now, but they showed me. Where was that? Where did they play? Do you know? The, the J, MCJ. Is that what it was? Is that where they played? I'm pretty sure it was, yeah. It was, was the it major, major, uh, major um, facility. Outdoor or indoor? Indoor. Out, outdoor. Yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember seeing that. Yeah. 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 It's amazing, huh? Yeah. It's, um, I mean, they only just showed something on the, the, uh, the Beatles visit in Australia on TV just like maybe a couple of months ago. Funnily, yeah. you mentioned that. And, and just the impact, you know. Um, but, there's a, uh, yeah, there's a great, uh, there's, uh, again, YouTube to the rescue. There was some, I didn't know it, but on that tour, they had a different drummer. It wasn't Ringo. Ringo was sick. Did you know that? Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't know that. They, what? they don't talk about it. But you, no. if you look closely, it's not him. It's this yeah. other guy. And he's yeah, right. sort of like disappeared. I, I think he, won't, he <laughs> won't talk about it. He's like uh, silenced, you know. But he, he's around. There's some guy that was the guy who did the Australian tour. Something a little trivia. Yeah, right. Jeez. Yeah. Well, I, well, hopefully, mate, uh, Mike Cantalano will come out to Melbourne and do a do a tour. That so, would be fun. Yeah, I would love would, to bring, you know bring my guys down there and have a lot of fun. It would be that would be a great way. Be really great when this whole mess is over. Yeah. Down so. there. Well, mate, um, I'd love to hear your your inter your interpretation of uh Dois so um I, Mike Catalano on the on the key, on the piano again um and then we'll come back and we'll just we'll wrap up the show with uh, okay. all right sounds good all right thank you I'll push the chair out of the way one shot one shot for all one shot for all there you go <laughs> uh smooth live show with Mike Catalano live from New York and um Melbourne here we are
Okay, there we go. Fantastic. Well done. Right. Thanks, Mike. That's amazing, man. Just uh, it's, I, as you could play for hours. <laughs> oh, thank you. All and, right. And, you know, into another world of. Nice um, too. And I hope again. I hope it sounds good out there. You said it sounds good on your end. It should, absolutely. right? If it's yeah, it sounds good. Nice. Nice. It should be good. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, you've got, uh, if I just, can I just put up a couple of these uh, notes there for you, mate? Um, wow. Oh, Bravo. Thank you, Sibeli. Thank you, Sibeli. Alex Mariah, beautiful. Alexa Mariah, Andres Elias. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Akel Alves, yes. Pucci Alves, yes. Thank you. All right. Pucci Alves. Right. Akel Alves. Agora, Andre Vito. All right, thank you. Cool, amazing. All right, nice. There you go, Doug Clayton. Fantastic, right, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Just uh, um, thank you to everyone who's uh, you know commented online. It's been an amazing hour with Mike Cantalano live from New York. Um, absolutely honoured, mate. Um, I don't know if you knew. You know, as I said, you can play for hours, mate. <laughs> Sensational. Um, it's a gift um, having your, your music on our show, um, but also on our radio show here in Melbourne. It's me, Jazz, not Melbourne, but uh, you can certainly check out um, us on the YouTube and Facebook moving forward if you want to redo it. And we will do a watch party for the for the show as well. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, key points, social media, how do people buy music, uh, what it is to keep you, um, yeah. where do people need to check in with you, man? Well, well the... Um Manhattan Affair is, is on, um, and Rio Affair, are both on iTunes. Manhattan Affair is on Amazon. And then on the uh, Facebook page, I think, I, do I hear you? Okay. Uh, yeah. The Facebook page is facebook.com, Mike Catalano Music. And then on the record company, I, I call it Catman Records. So I have a website. Catman Records. I have my Catalano.com. I just haven't, yep. haven't finished setting it up yet lately. But um, yeah, everything's in. We have the YouTube channel, Catman Records, and in, within that is my Catalano. And I put a lot of other videos too on the Catman Records. Like if I shoot some friends around town that are playing Will Lee or Steve Gadd or whoever, I'll always try to, you know, film. I, I enjoy doing that when people are out playing. Yeah. So I try to keep it interesting. Yeah. Well, um, no, you're a busy man, mate. And, uh, again, we thank you for your time this evening and uh, for, you know, taking it out and sharing this uh, music with us. Um, All right. Well, thanks mate. for having me, Paul. Let's do some more. We'll do it again. Do it Absolutely. Again. So, <laughs> for sure. Um, and we get you on the radio. Huh? What do you think we could do a live hookup? Uh, live hook up, yeah. Uh, now, today is, is Saturday your time. Uh, if I understand right, last night you had radio, right? Yeah, correct. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we uh, did a bit of a showcase on your music uh, for today, and obviously promotion for the Smooth Live show. But um, you know, it's uh, it's it, it's epic, mate. And I've absolutely had a blast uh, listening to oh, you play you. live. It was a lot of fun. So thanks to everyone who's um, online. I mean, it's uh, quite a great reception uh, for the show. But yeah, you can catch us on the Smooth Jazz Melbourne, uh, the YouTube channel. Um, which is the Smooth Live Show and obviously on our Facebook. But the best of luck, Mike. Um, big things uh, coming up. Looking forward to some of this new music that you're, you're uh, putting together. Yeah. And uh, yep. we'll get you back if you come back and share with us for sure. That would be fun. Absolutely. Sounds good, Paul. All right. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk soon. All right. We will, mate. We will. And, uh, take, care. take care, Mike. And uh, thank right. you again to Mike Cantalana, live from New York um, and uh, on the Smooth Live Show. All right. Thanks, Paul. Take care.